Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. <laughs> this week on the show, that's right, it's Plastic Surgeons from Hollywood. From Botox to filler to everything in between, those little nips and tucks keep our Hollywood celebrities looking the way they should. If you love the way your favorite celeb looks, it's because of these famous doctors. It's not genetics, and it's certainly not taking care of yourself. It's all work, and these guys are the craftsmen. So let's nip it in and tuck it out. It's time for Plastic Surgeons. Let's listen in. Wow, what an astounding room to be in. I hey, babes. It. What's up, babes? Great to see my babies today. Look at my babies. My babies look wonderful today. Hey, babies. Ha! I've seen a couple of you around the park. Ha! Absolutely. It is so good to see you guys. I am loving seeing you guys so much. Um, it's crazy that we're all in a room together because usually I'm in a room with celebrities <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and working on their face. Um, that's uh, usually what I do and, and how it's crazy just to see you guys because usually we are in different offices. Um, Wait, yeah. hold on. Do we all have Gucci belts on right now? Oh, you uh, got me. Guilty. Guilty. Is you have caught me. Oh my gosh! Um, that's, I'm abs. I'm abs gill of that. That means absolutely guilty in my lane. <laughs> what about it? Uh, Gucci and plastic surgeons—they go hand in hand. It looks good with the lab coat and the blue collar. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. It, it, you know the nice thing is about a belt is it, it's fun to to tighten everything up. Uh, that's why I always wear my Gucci belt. I love to tighten things up. Um, why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? If that's fun, does that sound fun for everybody? I would have absolutely, a blast doing that. yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, that course. sounds like a blast, babes. I'd love to do that, babes. That sounds like an absolute hoot and a half. Why don't you start? Okay, great. Uh, hi guys, my name is Maurice Cut, and I am a plastic surgeon for celebrity pets. Uh, I uh, I nip and tuck those cute little furry things, um, and I let them. Uh, I I I make them look better. Um, I work with a lot of famous pets. I've worked with a lot of famous pets, and uh, mostly dogs. Mostly dogs. Um, and I'm excited to dive in and and talk to um you know just talk a little bit about what I do. Um, yeah. You are the one who pulled the uh, the the the, the doggy's face so tight that it couldn't sense its balance anymore and toppled down the stairs in that video. That was yours. That was mine. It's like one of the best videos on Fail Army. Uh, it is one of my favorite videos. Uh, I love it so much. It was uh, one of my favorite clients, Sparky the dog. Uh, his owner and Sparky kind of came to this agreement that Sparky was sagging a little bit. He was a bloodhound, so known for saggy lips. What we did was we uh, genetically implanted and pulled back those cheeks and those lips so far that he actually lost a little bit of uh, rhythm in his ear, uh, his internal cochlear water and he and he fell downstairs people love the video and it's actually brought a lot more clients to my door that's absolutely wonderful babe i really don't talk to a lot of uh dog uh plastic surgeons i'm wondering if it is different at all from human beings babe yeah it is in a way that you know dogs they're dogs and they're cats and they're turtles and their hairs uh, they're, they're not humans. Um, Sounds like a song, babe. Dogs and the cats and the turtles and the hares. It's like I'm at a freaking Cat Stevens concert. Ha <laughs> ha! Who is that? I worked on him. You worked on Cat? That's I a client I've Kat. been wanting to get for so long because I feel like he captures both my worlds. Of uh, course, so babe. But hard. actually, he's a human being, even though his name is Cat, babe. And he actually <laughs> changed it to Yusuf Islam recently. And by recently, I mean about 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah, not babe. too recently, I would say. It's not. It's <laughs> yeah, not, babe. In, in, not recently <laughs> in the sense of the word recently. <laughs> recently anyway, I've been talking too of... much. You guys go. You guys go. I, I'm done talking. Um, you guys go. Well, it is interesting that we bring up uh, the concept of recently and 30 years and uh, it, this sort of time span, because as plastic surgeons, we are able to alter time, right? We are That's able right, to babe. give years back and take years away, should we so choose. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, just a little bit of philosophy I like to bring up uh, when we talk about anything that's an integral part of my practice. Uh, my name is Tatiana Jokovic. I am uh, known as the TikTok doctor. Uh, I have become very big on TikTok because of my no-nonsense explanation of surgeries. And uh, I simply tell the people point blank what is going on. I don't leave out the gory details. I tell you exactly what is going to happen. And um, people seem to like it. People, I get a lot of comments about uh, my hairline being so tight that it, that it looks like I'm about to to freaking fall over like that dog down the stairs. I am uh, at 2.3, 2.3 million uh, currently, and nice, uh, only climbing by the day. And Let I am talking to many influencers, many celebrities. They come in to me and I work on them, yes. I Natasha, love your videos, yeah. Natasha, I have to say, I the amount of clients that will show me a video and say, will this happen? Is this how you do it? I feel like I'm constantly watching you. Yes, yeah. in the way I, I do feel like I am the Bill Nye of uh, plastic surgeons. It, yeah. I, I've become more of an educator uh, to the world when I, I did not mean to. I did not mean for this to happen. But it is a, it is a new part of the industry, you know? We have to be putting ourselves on TikTok, so the TikTok comes to us and gives us money. I will say, Natasha, babe, and no offense to you, I will say that I would, I would consider your advice and your input about 40% correct. A lot of people come to me with input, and yeah. uh, they say, Natasha said, you know, that you do this or that with the skin that you take off my body, and it's simply untrue. Uh, a lot of the stuff you're saying that surgeons do behind well, the scenes no, certainly would... don't happen in my practice, Natasha. I certainly agree. don't happen okay, in mine. Well, we have difference of opinion, difference of opinion. I it's will facts. Say I'm talking about facts, Natasha. We're talking I facts. I have been through things you have not been through. Sure, Natasha. I have Natasha. been through things you have not been through. I have learned plastic surgery by my own sheer force of will. Okay? <laughs> I have that, learned on that YouTube. That is scary. Learned on YouTube, learned from context clues how to do okay. this. I, I want to not go babe, to school. Babe, babe. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps, and I will not take it. I will not take this from you. Babe, 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 and I don't want to disrespect you. We're all on this panel for a reason. The same reason we're all on uh, an article in a Southwest magazine, airline, uh, airline magazine, top surgeons in L.A., right? You Welcome can see to us Los Angeles. Every, every Southwest airline has a magazine that has our faces in it. I'll tell you that much. But what I will say, Natasha, is... I just want to I want to hear an example of how you use context clues in a surgery. I certainly do, but I want to know how you use them. Well, of course. So uh, if, if you have the patient, let's say they come in for uh, they want their forehead to be uh, tighter. Right. Sure. You want to uh, pull out the, the wrinkles in the forehead. Right. A number so, four. Yes. A number four. OK. <laughs> and your and, practice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have a However combo menu. you interpret that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a number four for me. It comes with a lip filler. <laughs> I have to hear more about that. Uh, context <laughs> clues wise, I would say that uh, if the patient seems uh, nervous, if little lines appear on their face as they are talking, that is a sign to take your scalpel and stretch, right? If sure, that babe. sort of, you're just sort of inferring from subtext. Uh, when to do that. So it's all about reading emotion, reading Great. cues, putting two plus two together. And I would actually just say, and I'm not trying to disrespect you, babe, not in any single way. A scalpel <laughs> is not used for stretching, it's used for cutting. So the idea well, that maybe you would... in your practice, that is how you do <laughs> okay. it. I do not tell you how to use scalpel, okay? That Absolutely, is not a... babe. I okay. think it is because I'm a woman you are saying this, but we can talk about this later. No, it's okay, babe. No, no, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to put anyone under the knife. That's not what we're doing here. So I'm sorry oh, for disrespecting okay. you, Natasha. I really am. Uh, but I will introduce myself. My name is uh, Derek Snip, and uh, you guys <laughs> might know me as the Skin Tag Assassin. I have a new show coming out on TLC. I uh, am uh, really well known for getting rid of all sorts of skin tags, things that hang. Uh, I say, things that hang, bing, bing, bang. That's what I like to say. <laughs> I knock them out. And nothing hangs off you that you don't want to hang off you. That's what I say in my practice. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm all about not only skin tags, getting rid of them, knowing exactly what they are and knowing why they shouldn't be there and knowing how to get rid of them in a fun way. 
I also am about all the newest treatments and re- elixirs, as well as chemicals and uh, renovations and solutions. So uh, you might ha- uh, see uh, Snip Botanicals coming out pretty soon, uh, all over the place, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about them. I sent you guys some samples, and I'm, I'm curious to see if you guys tried them. I, I, I know you have them with you right now, so we can get into that a little bit later, but I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys, talk shop. Boy, has anyone told you you look exactly like a property brother, but older? You know, I've gotten that. I've gotten that. I've gotten, hey, are you the third property brother twin? And I say, yeah. they're not actually twins. And that's usually where the conversation ends. I'm getting a uh, property brother meets Gumby. I'm getting a little oh, that's Gumby interesting. in there. Totally. And I but appreciate did you design it, your face? Did you design your face? No, babe. No, no, no. I, You know, I have a very elite group of top plastic surgeons in Los Angeles. We get together every holiday and we gift each other a surprise feature. And <laughs> every now and then we, we like to just go under the knife and, and we trust each other with our lives. I we did that in college. Our lives. You did that, that in college? like med school. Let me know if you guys want to come over. I mean, these guys, these guys are the reason, you know, uh, th- those lips win the Oscar, those eyes yeah. win the Grammy. You know what I mean? These guys, these guys know what they're doing. So, so I will say I trust them and, and I don't know what I'm going to look like in a year. You know, that's what happens. And, and I, and I like that because they're what trying to restructure to. you every year. It's kind of the Christmas restructure. Yeah, we restructure each other, but it's a gift. It's in good intentions. You know, there have been people that have come through and have shown malice and we're certainly not letting them back in. Uh, huh. So you got to be huh. good with your friends, you know? You make me laugh. I'm happy to be here. I can tell you're laughing. Look at that bobble. Tell us a little bit about you, my friend. I bobble my chin so you can know my skin thinks it's funny. Even Thanks though my so much, ch- babe. My skin isn't moving. Hey, guys. it. Hey, guys. It's me. Um, it's Dr. Bison. I am here. I um, I run. It's a famous part of Hollywood. Um, peek behind the curtain. I run what we call the injection... I run what we call the injection section of UTA. I live and work in an uh, area of uh, UTA, the agency and management company. And uh, they basically use me like a McDonald's for all the agents who need injections. Um, any little thing, any little line, I'll stick something in there and get rid of that line. That's Dr. Bison. <laughs> No, so you so, live uh, at agents you... <laughs> send you uh, actor clients as well, or is it strictly for the representatives only? I say this on all interviews because I am doing a lot. What's funny is I'm there for the clients, but I end up doing more injections daily to the agents. Isn't that funny, babe? <laughs> that's funny, babe. That's really that's funny these stuff. These agents, and that's why I have the combo menu. I know you you were curious about it. I have a number four, a number one, a number two. And I have a dollar menu, which means a thousand dollar menu. Okay. And, and boy, I mean, we really do call it the McDonald's drive through of UTA. Can you and go through the- I have heard the- of this yeah. because people are able to, I remember some something about your sale your sales your tagline is the way that you can go on your lunch break you go in and out you have your botox and you're back on a meeting yeah it really started that's exactly how it is it started with the selling sunset girls once they got ripped oh, yeah. at uta their timelines it basically didn't have enough time to do it so they and thank god for that by the way so happy they got those reps at uta <laughs> Well, yeah, they're they're repped across the board over there, um, and it was those two brothers, not the property brothers, who the other ones, the uh, the bald ones, Menendez brothers, the uh, the Oppenheimer twins, the Oppenheimer yeah, see, brothers, but yeah, the Menendez brothers. I did their parents, but anyway, I used to have an office in Brentwood, and um, and then UTA picked me up once they started getting a lot more clients that were influencers. And they said, why don't we just mold offices? And they have me on a retainer. Well, that is interesting. I will say you said you live at the UTA uh, office. Yeah. Is that, was that kind of a turn of phrase or do you actually kind of live? No, at the I UTA? live there. What you don't know about me right now, um, thanks to my face and some things I've done with a vocal coach, I'm 85. Whoa. Oh, no. Whoa. I love to hear that, babe. Love yeah. to hear that, Dr. That B. That is amazing. Yeah. You've got to awesome. tell us your secrets. Uh, you really, yeah, you uh, really yeah. have to tell so us I'm your 85 and I live in UTA similarly like an old person would live in a nursing home. <laughs> so Are there is it others a... of you? Is, <laughs> it, is that why? Just me. 
just me to so die. what makes it what to makes it a nursing home is it just that you're an old person living somewhere i would say babe that's actually different than a nursing home because you're working there babe you're yeah. working hard well, nobody I is mean, nursing at you. this point once you're in the business like we are i i mean i'm only doing injections at this point i'm not really doing a lot of anesthesia yeah um anesthesia is what i used to call it in it the is 90s. dirty it's a dirty trade it is anesthesia Every, Those anesthesiologists, say, they are handsy, too. They're loose. They yeah. They're are loose so people. And they you have loose balls and they have loose pants. And yeah. it is a cheat. In my opinion, it is a cheat to use yeah. anesthesia. Right? That's worrisome, Titania. Because then Titania. you are separated. Well, I have my practice and you have yours. You are yeah. separated from the decisions you are making. Because you can go, oh, <laughs> I was under. I cannot be responsible for it. Now my nose is this way. No, yeah. you have to be conscious and alive and aware of what is happening to you. And, yeah, I, wake and up. I, w I would say to Tanya, babe, I would say that that is probably you just deal with in consulting. If you were to run your uh, business a little bit differently, just make sure they know exactly what they're doing and you know how to execute that when they're under. It's actually a better situation for them to be under during such an intense surgery. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I would say you don't want somebody <laughs> screaming to death as you're, you literally scalp their face and stretch it and... A uh, consult, I think, is the well, most important part of life. Well, I don't understand why you need to waste an extra half hour yammering when we could be knifing. I don't understand how you run your business. I don't understand how you keep your lights on if you are just giving away free time to hang well, babe, out with your I patients. I get paid for consultants, babe. I get paid for consultancies. So, you get paid to talk to them, to say, oh, you are ugly. You would be better this way. Absolutely, but that's part of the deal. Yeah. Well, it's, usually it's, they like to look at different sizes. Like that. they like. Do you ever show some graphs or some pictures of their face? You don't do any of that, do you? Well, no. They. I trust the person that I'm talking to. An adult, if they come in at age 18 <laughs> or older, and they say, "I want my nose to be bigger or smaller," I have to trust them that as an adult they have made that decision. Do you want me to baby them? Do you want me to ask, oh, are you sure this is what it'll look like? No, I am not Listen, going to. Listen, babe. I'm sorry. I'm not going to waste my time. No, babe. Very look, I've seen the videos. I've seen the videos, babe. I've seen the videos when you try, you start building a bigger nose and you say, say when. And they're they're watching on a mirror and you have to say when, when the nose is big enough. Babe, I just don't think they're in the right I mind, babe. I have learned a lot from going to Italian restaurants. I have learned a lot by the way the servers listen to the context clues and they understand when to stop. They know. Ta Tatiana. Let me tell you, Botox is not like Parmesan cheese. You're only going to know you have enough two weeks later, Tatiana. <laughs> yeah, You're not going to know if there's enough cheese on your ravioli that instant. <laughs> You're telling me that Botox shows up two weeks later? Oh, oh, oh my that God. is not what happens to me. That is not what happens in my oh, practice. Oh, babe. That is not how it has been going. Uh, oh, so babe. I'm very interested to know more about that. But I'm sorry, Maurice, you said that you do consultations oh, and, and yeah, for the doggies? Oh, yeah, they're long. I have to explain them. I really try to get the dogs to understand what's about to happen to them. <laughs> I really, really try. Uh, you know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of treats. It's a lot of sits. It's a lot of rolls over. It's a lot of we're about to, you know, shave your bones down uh, to get you to the size of a standard poodle. A lot of extension surgeries. Trying to explain to a miniature poodle that's about to go through a transformation to become the size of a standard poodle oh. is it's – it's tough to explain, but I think I finally get through to them. So the consultation fees are mostly me and the owner trying to figure out a way to explain it. Uh, it's a lot of drawing. It's a lot of butt sniffing. It's a lot of things. Um, Maurice, can I ask how old your practice is? Uh, yeah, you can. And legally, I am not allowed to say. So um, thank <laughs> you for Why are you legally question. barred from saying it? <laughs> uh, you know, I've got lawyers. You know, we've got tons of lawyers. They say, do not bring up how long you've been running this. Well, um, respectfully, it's a, this it just is... feels like an expositional detail. It does not feel legal to me. It does That's not exactly. feel like Arbitrary a... facts, exactly. babe. Doesn't I really probably, feel like a gag yeah. order here. Babe, totally, I, could probably totally. I could probably check the Better Business Bureau, babe, and find the absolutely. information. Yeah, it feels because... like it was mandated by a judge. And the I don't record, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That's all right. And because uh, it would be, it would be, uh, you know, it would be all right. You know, you guys wouldn't blink an eye if it was six months. But if, if, if I said yeah. something like 30 years, you guys might start questioning things. So uh, it's better uh, left. And I'm not saying it's been 30 years. 
I'm not saying it's been 30 years that I've been doing it, um, but I, I am just saying that. So legally, I can't talk about it. Well, uh-huh. can I ask you? I The only animals I know are agents. <laughs> and That's funny, babe. I, thank you. Um, You've I, never I, met a I, dog? I, no, I, I just don't know them you've personally. You've never met a dog. You're telling me I've you've met never met one. a dog? I don't know them personally. What I mean is, I don't know much of the rules. Are there law? Were there laws before thirty years ago about cutting open uh, dogs and giving them nose jobs? Love the question. Absolutely love the question. Ooh, again, <laughs> my lawyers have per- barred me from kind of talking about the nitty gritty of what the legality of this is, because uh, a lot of people have questions and a lot of people want answers, uh, and we are just not allowed to to give them. So if you're going to take me to the court, then maybe you can find out. <laughs> All right, babe. I, yeah. I did want to ask too. You know, I, I've uh, uh, I, we actually worked on the street from each other in Beverly Hills. I, I see your practice, uh, or at least I tried to be on the protesters. Your protesters are so interesting, babe. I look at them all the time because they they seem to have. I don't know if it's because animal lovers are also musical theater people or something, but it, they seem to always be doing some sort of song or something over there. Uh, it's a lot of song and dance outside my. <laughs> it's a lot of song and dance outside my uh, my yeah my babe, veterinary me, and plastic yeah. surgery uh, 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 a clinic. Um, it reminds me of the Hamilton Lottery, babe. I don't quite know what's going on over there. I wanted to see if how that evolved. Yeah, well, ham unfortunately, for ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, for uh, it was actually very connected to the Hamilton lottery. They found out about it because it was happening down the street from a local. Uh, we are just right on Vine, uh, and uh, <laughs> Pantages was having touring Hamilton, and yeah. the, all the people waiting by kind of saw this sign and said, "What's going on here?" And then once they caught a whiff, they were like a bloodhound. Let me tell you, they would not let it go. Uh, uh, it's I'm non- sorry. How do you afford this real estate? How do I afford Hollywood the real estate? Hollywood and Vine? That must Good be, how question. much does that cost you a month? Can, oh I, my. can, you, add, can you tell me that? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you know, uh, just about, yeah, about the cost. It's just something It's tied up with lawyers and my lawyer said not to talk about it. So legally, legally I, speaking, I cannot tell you how much I pay or how much I charge for this work. Uh, all you have to know is the dogs leave pretty. Um, that's our oh, slogan. God. Um, do I love Hamilton? <laughs> you, have you guys seen Hamilton? So you're still on Hamilton. You're still stuck on Hamilton? <laughs> well, I think that show changed my life. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, I've seen Hamilton. Uh, have I seen of Hamilton? Ha- uh, yeah, I'm responsible for about 30% of the cheekbones at all time in every production of Hamilton. Yeah, we have Tell a deal. Me. They're we adding cheekbones. Deal. They're adding cheekbones. I thought they're, they would be taking them away. No, they're getting new <laughs> cheekbones. There's a specific type of Hamilton cheekbone. We call it the, 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 snip, the snip bone. And, you don't uh, call yeah. it the Hamilton cheekbone? It feels so much you. easier to call it the Hamilton well, cheekbone. Well, Hamilton isn't my name, is it, babe? No, I or wanted about, the credit, What about babe. the burr bone? I'm just a fan, but. The Bourbon, that's pretty fun, babe. I wanted to have an association to it because I'm doing all the work. So unfortunately, I did stick my little name in there. Uh, but uh, I do really love it. Really quickly, does the touring company get the burnos or do you have to, is it different for the main stage? The touring company can get it, but their contract is longer. So uh, they have to they have to commit to more uh, exposure after because, as we know, Hamilton kind of has uh, diminishing returns out in the wild. People I are... disagree. Okay. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just talk about it? Yeah. Babe, babe, you love Hamilton, babe. <laughs> You have changed your Zoom name. You have, if you are listening on audio medium, she has changed her Zoom name to Loves Hamilton. Well, I thought it would be a fun way to type out things that I enjoy that we could use as anchors throughout the interview. Sure. Okay, well, maybe we will communicate with each other via our names. So look out for that in the future. No idea if the listeners can see that at all. Um, but we will find out. Um, We're gonna find out, man. We're so, certainly gonna find out. Something I, I, I had a I had a question, you know, because I, I you know I was a plastic surgeon for a really long time, and I kind of do it on the side still for uh, non dogs and non pets. Um, and you know, people don't realize actually to make something pretty, it actually is kind of gruesome sometimes. Um, so like I'm I'm just interested, you know, like one. These are two completely different questions, and maybe I should ask them at different times, but I won't. One, <laughs> let's talk about the you know the brutality of this procedure. And two, what's your favorite celebrity secret plastic surgery that you've seen? Oh, babe, 
These are fun. These are fun questions. I can start. I think uh, what people don't realize is how disgusting a layer of fat is. Like if you really think about it and you really get into it, it's just this yellow curdled mess that we need. You know, we need it, babe. We need it in our body. It insulates us. It's important. I'm trying to make sure my clients know that a lot of what's in your body is good. And if it hangs off the body, that's where there's an issue. And that's why, bam, bam, I get you the skin tag assassin comes into town, knocks those things out of you. You know, I yeah. have heard. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I know you as, you know, this personality, you are so body positive, which is so yes, wonderful, babe. but yeah. you do cut off people's earlobes like nobody's business. Well, um, listen, I want you to love your body. And I've been having, you know, I have a, uh, a sh- uh, I, I guess he's a spiritual advisor. Uh, I go out with him to Tahunga and we, uh, I, I know what you're thinking. Tahunga? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. It should be Tahunga. It turns out it was Tahunga. You went to Tahunga. He has a retreat in Tahunga, a pretty industrial town, but he has a little retreat out there and we like to take a little bit of ayahuasca. And Is it just a house out there? <laughs> It's yeah, it's a house and it's it's one story but it's wide and it's really nice. What and makes a home a retreat, you know? Exactly. It's the amount of time you spend at it. And not the amount of time you spend at it at once, the amount of time you spend at it a year. Per year. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm there three days a year, it's <laughs> if for one year that's a vacation. Twice a year that's a yearly that's a yearly trip, right? Three yeah. to eight times a year, or three to eight times over three to eight years, that's going to go ahead and be a retreat, you know? So that's mm. how something kind of becomes and, a retreat. And then, actually, if it goes any longer, it kind of becomes a second home or even a exactly. house. Exactly. Or a summer, a house. you know, where you summer. So, and I'm not summering in Tahunga. It's, it's 15 minutes away from my house, babe. <laughs> but what I will say is when I go on these retreats and I have my spiritual advisor takes me, guides me through the cosmos, is what I like to say, babe. And I've had a conversation with God. I've had a conversation with a celestial being. And he told me that earlobes were a mistake. He told me there's no reason for him. He told me that that was just, he was self-conscious about having such sharp angles on someone's body. That was the problem. You know, and what I've found is that when I remove people's lobes, you don't have this disgusting dangly thing. You go straight from a sharp angle, you know? You don't need earrings. Why are we putting earrings on lobes? Because we're ashamed of them, because they're disgusting. It's like putting a bow on a big pile of turd. You don't need to do that, babe. Get rid of it. Throw the poop away and 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 put a bow on something nice like a like a like a GMC car. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, I heard so, you have been drawing lots of ire from the um, the piercing community, the ear piercing community. Yeah, I, I heard they tagged your car. I I heard horrible things. They are trying yeah. to torture you. Not only tagged my car, they skin tagged my car. They put a bunch. They tied a bunch of water <laughs> balloons to the bottom of my car to make it look like my car had skin tags. And I don't think that's very funny, babe. <laughs> I don't think that's funny at all. No, I think that's offensive. Which is so of strange, you know, not. because like they are also in a body morphing job. You know, exactly. it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's not that different. What's the difference, there, I, you listeners? There's no respect. What's no the difference respect. between dyeing your hair and completely shaving your nose off? Tell me the difference. And exactly. You know what I do comments. not get any respect from it all. Brain surgeons, heart surgeons, ENT, uh, gastrointestinal doctors, OBGYNs. Go through uh, all of them, yeah. <laughs> well, this, this goes back to med school. This goes back to med school. <laughs> because they think that we are the mean girls. They have a complex. <laughs> they think that we are the mean girls of their high school, that we are only working with shallow people. But in the end, who is talking about us behind our backs? They are the mean girls. Doctors Absolutely, are the babe. mean girls. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're so jealous. What? I don't know how to do mouth to mouth. You get over it. They're just simply jealous. And I do just want to put a little pin in this because we know we love to put pins in things. Um, when it comes to earlobes and cartilage, to the, to all the piercers out there, and by the way, all the piercers, am I talking to 15-year-olds at Claire's? Go get mad at somebody else for freaking something stupid, don't, okay? Don't Why start are you a fighting with me? Storm. Do not. Look, this is going to go viral. I don't care these 15-year-old teens at Claire's if you're watching this and you're mad at me because, babe, because I'm getting rid of your livelihood, how about you go to freaking high school and how about you study in biology? Because that's what I did. But what I'm saying is I have no problem with upper cartilage. I have no problem with piercings in the middle. The lobes, it's just we, they, the lobes need to gobe. That's what I say. Gobe. 
<laughs> Does it really fit? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, it's we're not using we're test we're focus market testing that for the show, but not but, quite a Lin Manuel. <laughs> no. What's your favorite Hamilton quote? I won't say, but I'll also I'll say. <laughs> Oh, legal reasons? <laughs> no, no, I'll say it's 1776. Um, oh, it's when they the say the dates. <laughs> you like when they say the dates. I think it's so creative. What a way to say we're in 70s. <laughs> anyway, I love the show. Anyway, I'll say, what was your question, Maurice? What was the other one? There was two. Oh, what's the most disgusting part, babe, right? And then yeah. what's the what's a celebrity that you wouldn't you wouldn't know? Uh, has, Your favorite has, secrets, okay. uh, uh, plastic surgeon celebrity. You. Yeah, I got I got a celebrity you would know I operated on, not because I did a good job, because he's so fucking disgusting. I tried <laughs> to inject a little uh, Botox into Mr. H. Weinstein. Oh, um, and let me tell you, <laughs> I have never seen a more disgusting skin in my life. I stuck the needle into his forehead and the needle catapulted out of the building because his skin is so vile it absolutely smelled like bad eggs when i got through the skin and it was absolutely disgusting and i was shooting blanks Anything I put into that, uh, anything I put oh, into that. I hate when you shoot forehead. blanks. I hate it. I, I hate it. When, when nothing comes out of the syringe, I swear something was in there, babe. It's so funny. <laughs> Let me tell you. Not everything can be a perfect shot. Not Sometimes oh, no. tonight is not the night. That's no. what you tell but people. Let me tell you. That's what you tell them. But I was loaded. I had the tank fully fucking loaded, burr, Aaron Burr loaded. And I'm pushing this stuff in, and I saw no difference. I think I put more Botox in um, Harvey Weinstein's forehead than I think I put on the entire cast of Sex in the, C in the City. Oh, uh, and that was back in the day when I had a Brentwood office. You know, anyway. babe. Har H H was a really hard client. I think all of us dealt with him. I was actually sent as a mercenary once. Somebody wanted me to put his uh, balls on his face. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I tried to do it. Have you ever seen that movie Valkyrie where Tom Cruise tries to kill Hitler? It's kind of like that. But uh, I couldn't God, get through it. Can it I was, tell you? Yeah. If, you? if he had his balls on his face, on his forehead, I bet that'd be more moisturized than his natural forehead. <laughs> hey, now. that thing was like the Coachella Valley. I believe that. Yeah, it was funny. Everyone was trying to get him. Everyone was trying to get to the plastic surgeons and say, make him look like we know who he is. You know what I mean? And this was this was during Shakespeare Loves Award season. This was a huge, it would have been huge. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't no. do it. I mean, there's make, you could make julia roberts gorgeous with 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 maybe one with not even an injection yeah i i could pump a whole village worth of botox into that man and there's nothing going in yeah well, that I just know. it goes to show that if you if you fill somebody with botox it doesn't necessarily mean they're beautiful you have to have the artistic design that's it, it. Mm -hmm. that and that takes a long time to learn that takes mm -hmm. a very long time to learn. And I but think also, some of us are still learning that even today. You yeah, know? It feels like you might be learning it. It feels like you still might be learning <laughs> it a little bit. I think all of us are learning in real no. time how Botox, Botox works. That it has <laughs> delayed effects and that you shouldn't keep going because you don't see the effects immediately. That you shouldn't do maybe 15 rounds in one sitting. I think all of us are going to walk away with this new information as better surgeons. Oh, babe, babe, babe. I hope you know it at least, because I certainly do know that. You know, well, it really is, frightens it, it me to speak to It is called Botox, Dr. Tatiana. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say I'm a big fan of- <laughs> As uh, in it I, talks, as in it's loud, or as in- It's just not Botech. <laughs> Didn't you say that? I'm 85. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm a huge fan of your TikTok, uh, Doctor. Uh, um, oh, thank uh, you. Um, I will say, I my, one of my talking about celebrities. One of my favorite things that you do is you pull up celebrities on the red carpet and you say what work they've done. Um, mm. And I love watching it because a lot of the times I'm going, that's just not true. I don't know yeah. what she's talking about. <laughs> well, and I would. I would say that everything is true to me, right? So, and uh, true to what I believe the context clues of the situation are. And some people, you know, I am using 
what people see me when I do that on the red carpet and I say, uh, nose job, tummy tuck, lipo, forehead, and I do that, it, people think I am some sort of uh, plastic surgery psychic. And in a way, I am in the way that real psychics are just guessing all of the time. And okay. they're really good Don't guessers. Don't enrage the psychic community. We've already pissed off the teens. You guys, you do not want these people outside of your businesses. You do The psychic community and the tweens, they are outside my businesses singing along to Hamilton a lot of the time. So just watch it. Just oh, watch it. Oh, my God. That must oh, be. Oh, Dr. Bison's going to freak out. He's going to sing. I mean, come on. In this city, you could throw a quarter and it's going to land on a plastic surgeon who loves Hamilton. <laughs> you know what I will say, Dr. Titania, I, Tatiana, I saw on your, uh, uh, on, your, on your Instagram that you said Emma Stone got uh, her eyes doubled. She got her eyes twice as big. And I, I will say, babe, I don't think that's a procedure. You can't get you can't no. enlarge in eyes like that. And uh, I don't and I actually know Emma personally. I know her actually as Emily, because that's her real name. And I, I know do her too. from Arizona. Oh, you know yeah. Emily? You know, yeah, Emily I know Emily Stone? Yeah, yeah. You know I know Emily, Emily Stone? You guys hang out, drinking popcorn, eating bonbons, watching well, movies. You I don't do, do, I don't do all that Stone? stuff, but I've seen her at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house. You know, I've seen her. And I give I'm, her a number six, which is what we call a bonbon. It's a Bobo. Anyway, continue. What do you well, mean by that? <laughs> continue, Derek. <laughs> Look, what do you she say got about that? her eyes doubled. I'm sorry if that is the truth. That is the truth. What I have. Look, I woke up. I saw a picture of her on my phone and her eyes were huge. I do not remember her eyes being this big. So that is why I am sure. I am sure over my beating heart. She has had her eyes doubled. And just because you do not possess the technology as a surgeon to double those eyes does not mean that the procedure does not exist. That's yeah, just Tatiana, what I've learned. Tatiana, I Tatiana, babe, babe. Tatiana, can I just say devil's advocate? Maybe you zoomed in on her face on your phone and then fell asleep? <laughs> I do not unzoom before I fall asleep. I always return the pictures back to their original size I mean, before my head doctor. hits the pillow. I you will always not have to okay. pinch out. that. You always have to I reach out. I pay attention to details. Details are my entire thing. I will never unzoom a picture. On Google Chrome, I will always reset back to fit. Always okay, reset back to fit to page. Okay, back to okay, fit to man. page. Tatanya, I'm going to come in with a second accusation. I saw a TikTok where you said SpongeBob um, had lip filler. Honey, he's a cartoon. I'm 85 no, and no, I know that. no. I said normal SpongeBob had lip filler. Normal SpongeBob. In the episode where SpongeBob becomes shiny and normal, that is when he got the lip filler. I would never. SpongeBob I is a rare natural beauty. Rare, untouched specimen. Perfect in every proportion, shape, size, face, holes, whatever. I will never say shit about regular SpongeBob. Now, babe. normal SpongeBob, I could talk for hours, right? Babe, babe, people with medical licenses simply don't talk about this kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you, babe. People with medical licenses okay, simply okay, don't okay, occupy just, just their one, lives it, like okay, this. Wait, no, you know, because in the dog community, we have been trying to figure out how to double dog's eyes for years. <laughs> okay. um, so if you it's have crazy. an idea of how to do it, if you, I'm interested to see if you have an idea of how it would work. <laughs> What's crazy to me is that Maurice, even though you are just a bundle of red flags, I cannot help but think that Tatanya is the hardest and the scariest at this table. No, I am not the scariest. I am not the scariest. Why are we not focused on the dog man, the man who is mangling dogs? This man is mangling dogs and he can't even talk about it. He's sinister and he wears a dark cloak over his soul. I want to know, Maurice, once and for all, do these dogs like it? And how do you sleep at night? Those are my two questions. Icebreaker. So, love these questions and would love to get into it. No. Oh, yikes. <laughs> um, unfortunately, <laughs> legally speaking, I cannot talk about how the dogs feel uh, uh, post-surgery, but I will say they love treats. Uh, they're still wagging their tails and eating the treats. And a lot of the time, we plastic surgery a smile because that's a huge surgery that's that a red these flag, celebrities my friend. Want. No, it's babe. a huge surgery. Babe, you, that's bad you news, love, babe. You want to see babe, your dog that's smile. that's bad news, You want to see your dog smile. No, I babe. don't. I don't want to see my dog smile. That would scare I me. I don't understand how this is a red flag. I bad just not news, see. It's babe. not. 
adding up for me. A babe, poodle I... showing its teeth is not something so, we need. Yeah, if we're I can hiding ask, the teeth. Babe, and I don't want to bring adding down lip filler. We're making a smile, so the pu- poodle kind of emulates Goofy, and it's more charming and more fun for the dog. Babe, I don't want to bring down the mood, but I do want to just get, in your opinion, if I had an animal that I think, oh, my animal is exhibiting signs of wanting some sort of plastic surgery enhancement on their body. Happens what are all the, the symptoms? Time. What are the signs? How do I know they're consenting to a surgery, babe? If you find a dog glancing in the mirror or reflective pawns a lot, really wondering, contemplating, if you find your dog pawing at something over and over a lot, if you look at your dog and go, hmm, he's kind of lost his cuteness. These are all the symptoms of a so dog the third wanting. One, babe, the third one, babe, is more sinister than the other ones, right? Because that I is don't you. Know. I don't understand. That is you, power as opposed to the the power of the dog. So legally speaking, the word sinister cannot be mentioned within 25 <laughs> words of my name. You uh, can't get order us. You can't get order us. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Sinister. <laughs> See, it works because you're like, why is she counting? What's going on? Like, I'm sorry, what babe. am I even talking about? I'm sorry. So yeah, there was a gag word. order. No, word restraining orders, babe. I do not know about that. A huge word restraining orders. I've got some of the you best can't put lawyers them on attend. us. You can't put them on us. You just simply can't. You can't blankly. Restraining orders also don't work for a blanket amount of people. You'd, they work yeah. for specific people. So you'd be surprised, and it does work, and legally speaking, you cannot mention me or refer to me within 20 times. I've words of the word sinister. You have oh, a boy. gag order that is contagious for all those around you. Like a disease. Like a plague. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that it's way. It's a legal trigger, if you will. Mm. Um, you remind me of an agent. In what way? <laughs> I can't follow you. You're always sp- spouting lies, and all I want to do is get to the second act already. <laughs> <laughs> that was I think Hamilton. You started, yeah, I think end you started Hamilton. talking about Hamilton. Again, <laughs> no. Hamilton. <laughs> no. So really quick, though, we kind of missed the mark here. <laughs> Tatiana, you have no idea how to double eyes. You have no idea that's uh, that's not a thing. I don't did, think that was the mark, babe. Did <laughs> that was, John F. Mark. Kennedy? Did John F. Kennedy know how to get to the moon personally when he made the call? Did Doctor. he know that? Doctor. Did he know that when he requested, "Let's go to the moon"? Did he know that? Because I am not expected to know every single thing that is possible. So just to understand, you, what your idea of how people went to the moon was John F. Kennedy was sitting somewhere and said, you know what? Let's go to the moon. And I babe. was there. I was there. It was 1963. I was a little girl. I was watching this on my TV. And I tell you what, he said it and then it happened. Well, but babe, babe, I do want to be careful. And I, I want to be represented. You know, I want to be a, a clear on your accent here uh we are talking about the space race and you maybe sound a little russian babe so what was the narrative what was the narrative you were seeing the space race through babe i'm just curious Uh-oh. so our coverage was a little uh, negative it was a little um look at look at what this evil man is doing um and so i sort of had to unlearn that shift via context clues like okay maybe i want to live in america one day maybe i should view this man speaking through a positive lens okay. 1969 okay. is that a song in hamilton no i'm 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 doing my own hamilton for this moment and i'm saying the year we landed on the moon <laughs> have hey, you ever I met question. lin-manuel has he ever come through I freaking wish. Okay, I have a question for everyone at the table. Has anyone ever asked you for a cosmetology uh, service, something on their face, um, a change, if you will, um, that you thought they didn't need? Oh, I can tell you have an answer already, Dr. B. That's why you brought it up. Let's hear it. No, I don't. I literally just asked. (laughs) But what if you did, babe? (laughs) What? <laughs> you kids are I can't I can't keep going with you. She kids. works at an agency. She's just simply making conversation. That is how I it a, works over there. Maurice asked a question and then so did Tatanya. So oh, I thought I'd ask a question. Because, no, that was it's that Tatiana. Was, yeah. Because here's the question. Why do you keep going to Tatanya? Tatanya. Tatanya. Which is a way weirder name. 
name than Tatiana, which is the norm. <laughs> Tatiana is like a character from A Midsummer Night's Dream, and that reminds me of Hamilton. Yeah. So and, anyway. No, and I'm sorry, babe. I derailed you a little bit. I thought you seemed like you were bound, chomping at the bit to, to, to give us an answer. No. Well, I'm well, sorry. You're just asking a question. Oh, I... Well, I think where the skin meets it meets the road here a little a little oh, road, yeah. where the skin meets the road here Nose is crest. a lot of plastic surgeons are um, are accused of um, just doing work on patients and um, maybe those patients don't need that and mm-hmm. they still do it because they say we're money hungry right because what we're yeah. doing sometimes isn't always a necessity like a lot of other doctors um, so I'm curious if you guys will well, say I have yes an, to actually- any. I had an interesting one. I had a I had a uh, I had a patient come in and uh, I didn't understand it all. Paid off for them, and it was actually a lesson of listen to your patients a little bit more. They made their cat grumpy, um, and he mm. became grumpy cat. Um, yeah. Yep, that was actually my work. Uh, the grumpy cat was actually my work. Um, I and conf- are you connected to the death of Grumpy Cat in any way? Now we're going into, into, to the now we're going into territory cat? I cannot talk about. I cannot. Did they want to make their cat grumpier? That's a thing we can't talk about. Uh, and my question, babe, too, is it, was the cat grumpy because you made the face look grumpy or was it because of some sort of other operation that caused <laughs> the disposition to forever turn grumpy, babe? Such oh. a good question. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Unfortunately, legally speaking, I banned from talking about Grumpy Cat. Um, oh, now just you're now. banned from yep. that. Okay. Yeah, just talking about the Grumpy Cat. The legal verbiage is all over You've the board. from a discourse. If you had never name dropped Grumpy Cat, I never would have formed the question in my mind oh, is he actually grumpy because of something that happened to him? Now well, people will ask you this question because you had to name drop it. Well, maybe it's mm. a lesson on you guys. Leave a name drop as a drop. Let me pick it up and walk away. Huh? You ever think about that? I um I I had a really interesting surgery uh, that I was being lined up for, uh, and babe, it was it was kind of muddy and and, and murky and, and difficult to deal with. But the long story short is, uh, beloved character actor Brad Garrett, you might know him uh, as a Ray's brother in Everybody Loves Raymond. He had a comedy club. Uh, he's done so many funny things. Till Death on Fox, fantastic show. He came in once and he said, "I, I want to be black." And I said, "I said <laughs> I can't do that, babe." I said, <laughs> "I said, I said, babe." Thank I, God I, you said no. Thank Are God you, sure? you put a stop Are you to sure? that. Are you sure this story is true? This is a huge accusation. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not yours TikTok to make, babe. And if you do, I will cause legal action. This is confidential. Uh, please do not bring that up. But I will say that yeah i said look i love your skin as it is you got a beautiful heritage you're a beautiful guy i think this is gonna put you in some hot water and it's also not gonna be what you're satisfied with if you do such a drastic change to your body you're gonna see problems with it for the rest of your life because you're gonna fixate on it that's what i like to say i didn't get into the completely offensive implications of it (laughs) and i did walk him out of it of course (laughs) that's a way that's a nice way of walking him out of it that's not really calling out his behavior as inappropriate we did kick the can as you might say we kicked the can babe but but and 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 i just thought this isn't really my responsibility, right? I'm a surgeon. I'm on the body. <laughs> you, don't him. <laughs> you, you don't need to educate him. You don't need to say steer him educate clear. Him. I respect exactly, that. Just say babe. you're not going to do the surgery and get out. Exactly. And there's no red flags with Brad Garrett in any way. He seems to be a wonderful guy that everyone likes to work with here and there. And he's a talented actor. So I don't think whatever was going on with him that day came to light. And I'm glad for him. <laughs> That's awesome. I That's am, really good. I am glad to hear that for him. I will say uh, I do have, um, I did have to tell someone though once I normally, you know, they come in, they are adults, I trust what they have to say and I do it, right? But this time, uh, so, okay, a, a woman comes in and she is an influencer and she says, I want to look like the Kardashians right now, uh, currently, how the Kardashians look currently. The but, amount of times I get that every day, everyone loves it. It's, mm-hmm. it's true. And the tragic thing is, because we all know, the, the Kardashians are butt in, butt out, butt in, butt out, boobs in, boobs out, boobs in, boobs out. It is, it's constantly shifting. Now, this girl yeah. was watching the Instagram reels 
uh, Kardashians, which, as we all know, is four weeks behind the TikTok yep. Kardashians. We all know so that. So she was we asking for that. a completely different Kardashian. And so I had to tell her, no, I'm so sorry. I cannot do this to you because I think you are not of sound mind. Mm. And it's tragic when people do not keep up. They don't know exactly what they want. And that is when mistakes happen. Oh, so that was the one where you said not of sound mind. That was the only time. That was the only time. That is when I it would have been so wrong of me as a doctor to do it. I saw that guy on TikTok saying that you gave him bullfrog face. <laughs> well, on his the ass. bullfrog <laughs> face, I will say, it did not look like that when he left my office. The day, okay. the second he left my office, you gave him now, too much problem... Botox. You kept on giving him too much Botox, and he, his face blew up like a bullfrog. There so much that no came out of his ass. That four <laughs> days later, he looked like a bullfrog because of me. There is that could be something. That could be anything. That could be anything. When he walked out to my office, he looked like a lovely, botoxed boy. How oh, incredible! <laughs> Listen, wow. it's it's crazy. We're even discussing this, right? We shouldn't be talking about our work because the work of a good plastic surgeon. Uh, you can't even detect, right, baby? No, oh, it goes it, it, unnoticed. Oh, yeah. If you look and you say, did you have some work done? I've done too much. You know what I yeah. mean, babe? I mean, also, that's, that's the whole goal. It's hitting me now. Uh, isn't this a huge HIPAA violation? We well, didn't that use specifics, is right? Is plastic surgery counted under HIPAA or are we considered think, real? In the well, <laughs> yes. A lot of us are uh, actual doctors that have studied at medical school. Yeah. Maybe half of us, <laughs> I would I mean, say. I I did something that I don't think you would notice because he's not in the public eye. But um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld's agent um, asked me to make his make his eyes um, make them double. So no, <laughs> I would never do that. I'm not an idiot. Take a cold um, shower, Maurice. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it can't be done. Relax, relax, oh, come on, down, boy, down. Come on, down. anyway. <laughs> Um, he didn't, the, the agent didn't want to blink, um, because he wanted to be awake all the time because cocaine wasn't enough. And then I started seeing agents come in and ask for that. Um, Adderall, and, it was during the Adderall shortage. Um, they wanted to stay on it. So they wanted their eyes, um, open. So I did a lot of work up here and in the forehead, but it simply couldn't be done. So after a couple, um, you know, uh, like just some, like slow intro into the surgery, I started to notice that this isn't something I want to do. Um, and that's where I really realized I am not a mean Hollywood plastic surgeon. I'm going to stop, even though I could make bo boodles of money and I could see Hamilton on Broadway whenever I freaking want. I'm not going to take people's money if I don't think this surgery is smart. That's mm. a great point, Dr. B. And I really agree with you. I mean, I'm curious, uh, talking industry, what are some trends that you guys have seen that you either say, I hope this fad passes, I don't want to have to deal with this again, babe. Or what do you say no to? What do you say, hey, you're going to regret this a little bit later. You don't want this right now. Like, what are you guys seeing? I'll put an injection every anywhere. No, oh, me too. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'm in the, I do the injection section. So I don't say no to a lot besides crazy stuff. Yeah. I'll tell you the buccal fat thing. Leave it where it is. That's what I want to say. Buccal fat is important, and, and let it be what it is. Leave I it where it is, unless it's over forty thousand dollars in my pocket. Is what I say. No, and I and I draw the line of that. What I'm saying is I don't move buccal fat. I so so we have a difference of opinion there, Doctor Biden. <laughs> Now, this does not count maybe under the uh, technical definition of what a plastic surgeon is, uh, quote unquote, supposed to do. But I think that people are doing crazy things with teeth right now. I think that everybody's teeth are a little too straight and a little too small. And I think that people are filing them down. I think that it's weird and I think it's time to get rid of it. I think we should just let our natural teeth go. Mm. And it's the same thing happening with dogs. I just want those dogs. A big thing for me, though, is, guys, stop trying to make your dog look like Jacob Elordi. He's he's not going to be here for long. And he already kind of looks like a dog. That happens um, a lot? Also, yeah, does that happen a lot? And also, what's going to happen to Jacob Elordi, babe? <laughs> so, good question. <laughs> oh, I would love to get into that. it. I would love to get into what's going to happen to Jacob Elordi. But, no, <laughs> legally cannot. Um, and I shouldn't have brought him up. We can't even really talk about him. But he looks like a dog, and, I, and a lot of people want their dogs to look more like him. 
And I think he, no. It, it first was the Kardashians make your dogs look like Kardashians. Then it was make your dogs look like uh, um, uh, uh, Euphoria. And then now it's all make your dogs look like Jacob Elordi. Elor- and I'm just not having it, you know? Yeah. I think another fad in the plastic surgery um, world that is just really hit us with a big load is preventative Botox. We didn't have yeah. that. Um, my 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 office in Brentwood wasn't the size that now I could probably afford because preventative Botox. I mean, we're putting it on everyone just in the name that this will come soon, versus just normal Botox, which is a cleanup job. You know what I mean? It's true. Yeah. These are these girls are you know they are nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Yeah. They are coming in fear of death in their eyes, and we are yeah. uh, you know trying to stave off these years, trying to give her more years. And I don't think yeah. that's a crime, but it is um, certainly I something think it, it we I think when you do it, it is a crime. I think when you do it, it is a crime. And Maurice, I think you as well. <laughs> okay, I think when Mr. you do it, it's Criminal a crime. dog man, Mr. Frankenstein dog doctor. Again, legally speaking, you cannot have the word Frankenstein dog. <laughs> you babe, cannot you cannot have, say again, you babe. Cannot... Babe, you cannot say again. This is the first time you're saying it, babe. Again, and again, I just want to read Iterate one more time. Cannot say the word criminal near my name or the word Frankenstein dog. I, Here's a I question, I hate to babe. be repeating myself, guys. I hate to be repeating myself. I do want to ask because you brought up preventative Botox, babe, and I'm curious if anybody else has gotten it or this is just in certain circles I'm in. I was um, asked to deliver prenatal Botox the other day to a baby. <laughs> And it was kind of this weird moment where I thought maybe she was joking. And then I was like, babe, to be honest, I was a little bit freaked. I said, babe, I, you know what? I don't work on a face until it's out here. You know what I mean, babe? That's what I said. You know, but I went home and I, I, I talked to my partner. I said, what the F? That's oh, we, a little too far, right, babe? We see some weird stuff. I had an agent in some weird manic episode ask for me to give preventative Botox to their Barbie. Hi, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I didn't. I was at my wit's end. Hey, I, it's crazy, but I actually think we have a, a videotape of that. Do, can we maybe play the <laughs> oh, footage of that? We have a videotape yeah, of that. Yeah, babe. Of this agent coming to me? Yeah, okay, yeah babe. Uh, yeah, because UTA films everything. That's funny. Yeah, it. yeah, you're right. You're right. We have it all. Hi, uh, Dr. Bison. How are you today? Sorry, I'm looking at 4,000 emails at once and I'm texting and I think I have a bag on my head. Um, so, of Dr. Course, Bison. Honey. Of course, honey, look at the menu. Uh, it's lit up. Uh, there's a, a combo number. Just tell me what you'd like. Dr. Bison, I want a number four, but it's not for me. It's uh, for my little me, my little mini me right here, right? Uh, your junior agent that works under you or your unpaid intern? No, okay, so the they're going to stand over there and I am talking about this! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm holding oh. a Barbie! Oh. I'm holding a Barbie! <laughs> oh, hell Okay, it. that was crazy. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like she kind of knew she was having a manic episode, so she was leaning into it. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like no one was debating if she was holding the Barbie. Yeah. It just kept being like, I'm she, holding the It was the like Barbie. she wanted to be a little freak. Yeah, what what I wouldn't give, babe, for it to pan over to the assistant and the junior assistant and the junior agent. I would love to see their faces, babe. What did you see? Oh, I I mean, I just kept – I looked over, and um, there it's two girls, Tori and Blory, who I've done a couple okay. times. What a fortuitous Blory. job assignment for both of them, huh? And Blory, I over-injected a little. So Blory okay. was just like deer in the headlights, but it was probably just because her two weeks was set in. <laughs> wow. I like, I like it. I think, um, I think the agent was really feeling herself and her truth in that moment. And I Tatiana, think you was... seem really affected, babe. You seem affected by that. Well, yes. If I had not removed my own teardrops, I would be crying right now because this is some... Um, it's just really inspiring to see women go after what they want. <laughs> Tatiana, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore. I think I oh, think no. it is time. Uh, your your cheeks are <gasps> filling up with water. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I forgot Damn. I moved my tear ducts down to the bottom of my mouth just in case I would need them later. Oh, weird, like a waterbed situation. <laughs> yes, it's so <laughs> floaty. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, babe. Oh, no, babe. Oh, no. Oh, well, darling. you guys, I should probably deal with this. Should we play Truth or Dare? Yeah, what? let's do that. <laughs> yeah, let me. <laughs> yeah. You deal with that, and, and let's end on how plastic surgeons always end with a good game of truth or dare. All right, Doctor B, you're up. <laughs> maybe, maybe Tatiana starts this one. It seems All like right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Derek Snip. I yes, dare yes, you. Oh, to no put choice. A... <laughs> gonna ask. That's how we do it in plastic surgery. They That's taught right. you that in med school. That's right. I All dare right. you to put a patient's skin tag inside a different patient's purse and then leave. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, I don't have any clients tonight, obviously, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm going to Palm Springs next week, but I'll do it next time. Oh, the promise of a dare. I love this game. Oh, I God, love this game. It's going to game. happen later, and we won't see it. Maurice. Oh. Yeah? I dare you. Okay, no choice. <laughs> I dare you to... Uh, Put a little camera inside a doggy so we can see what it looks like uh, inside of them. Okay, I'll do it later. Okay, babe. <laughs> My turn. Okay, Dr. B, truth or dare. Uh. I dare you <laughs> to... What the fuck? <laughs> I, I, I dare you. And this is what plastic surgeons always do. We of play course, truth babe. or dare. When of we're course, together, babe. we cannot fight it. We'll always play a little truth or dare. It's inevitable, babe. I dare you. The next time you have a meeting with an agent, you try to get signed. Okay, I promise to do it. <laughs> Who's left over? Tatiana. Well, that would be me. I started the trend. <laughs> Tatiana, I dare you to quit. I will kill you with a knife tonight. This has been Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists answering the question. Now that's why they call it showbiz. Good night. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood roundtable podcast created, performed, and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed in this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AOA, AOA, AOA are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe, and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Hollywood.